Marianne Williamson wrote, our deepest fear is not that we're inadequate. Our deepest fear is that we're powerful beyond measure. It is our light, not our darkness, that frightens us most. And as we are liberated from our own fear, our presence automatically liberates others. Hi, I'm Preston Smiles, and I'm a loveaholic. I stand here today to remind us all what the most important job in the world is. Being love, showing up as love. But before we dive too deep into this beautiful ocean of devotion called Catalyst Week, I would like to uh, share a quick story because people always ask me, it literally happens every day, is your real name Smiles? <laughs> all of you guys were thinking it. The answer is yes and no. You see, I was born Preston Davis, Jr. Actually, Preston Davis, Sr. is here tonight. Daddy, stand up. Mm -hmm. This is his first time ever seeing me speak, and that is one of my heroes. Um, so I love you. So uh, I went to school at LSU, and Louisiana State University, and um, I would go to the theater department a lot, and I would see these these kids throw their trash and their cigarette butts um, on the ground in front of this particular janitor named Mrs. Evans. And it bothered me. It really bothered me. But instead of yelling at them every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, I decided that um, I knew I would see her at 8 a.m. every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday before class. So I brought an extra bottle of water and a granola bar, and we would have breakfast together. And we would just talk about random stuff, nothing too deep, you know, her kids, et cetera, et cetera. And one day I was running down the hall, and she stopped me, and she said, boy, you always run around here smiling. I'm gonna call you Preston Smiles with your happy self. And <laughs> it hit me that, that that was my name. So I go by Preston Smiles as a reminder that no matter what my job title is, my real job is to show up as love. So this talk today is about doing what we as a society always figure out one way or another. That while it would be awesome to take our iPhones and our BMWs and our houses to the grave with us, that we actually can't do that. And that the only thing that matters when it's said and done is whether you've loved and been loved. So, my hope is that I leave you with some tools to ignite and inspire you, to turn the volume up on your life and love louder. So a little bit about uh, where I come from and the context in which I'm speaking. I am uh, the founder, the co-founder of the Love Mob. Are there any Love Mobbers in the building? <laughs> oh, oh. Uh, it is a social movement dedicating to spreading love all over the world through organized acts of love. We do that through giant flash mobs and, and different love-based events. And our, our take on it is that it takes, let me show you a couple of pictures, that, that's our symbol. Uh, it takes a village to raise a village. And, and as the old praf African proverb states, that if you wanna go fast, go alone, but if you wanna go far, go together. So that is exactly what we do. Um, I know that uh, on the surface, I appear to be this 6'2", beautiful chocolate drop of a man, right? <laughs> I realize it, it's okay. But in reality, I am love. I am energy in a space, I am vibration and frequency, and I know the same for each and every one of you. So, before we go any further, I just want to take a moment of silence. I want to do two things. I want to take a moment of silence for all those people who didn't wake up this morning and for the beautiful gift and privilege we have to still be in the dance of this thing called life. You know, the funny thing about life is, is that none of us are getting out alive. Um, 
So with that said, we'd like everybody to stand up. We're going to do something really fun. A catalyst first. All right? So first of all, turn to your neighbor and say, you are awesome. Like that. Just like that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> all right. All right. Hold it. Hold it. Hold it. <laughs> all right. Stop talking. <laughs> you guys went carried away with it. All right, and now here's, here's what we're going to do. So check this out. On the count of three, we're going to scream at the top of our lungs. We're going to scream so that they hear us on the Vegas Strip. Okay? But know that you're not just screaming for yourself. You're screaming for those little Nigerian girls who never made it home. You're screaming for the families in Israel and Palestine right now who live in terror. You are screaming for the families that are burying their kids in Chicago. You're screaming for the, for the women that are sold into sex slavery every hour. Because we know that this isn't just about us. We know that what happens over there is happening here. So this is a celebration. So on the count of three, I want to hear it. All right? One, two, three. Beautiful, you can have a seat now. So that thing, that thing that's swirling around right now, that intangible feeling of unity, of togetherness, that's what I'm about. Seriously. Uh, people always ask me, like, dude, where do you get all this fire? Like, you, you know, you have a lot. And I'm like, I get it. <laughs> but I wasn't always like this. I didn't use it this way. See, I grew up in a small town, uh, Dennis the Menace neighborhood called Harbor City, California, which is a suburb of Los Angeles, California. And I grew up in the middle of an identity crisis because everything that I saw on television, on radio, in history books said that I needed to be rough and tough and dangerous and mean. So naturally, by the time I was 13, I joined a gang, a gang we made up called NFCG, which was Notorious Effing Criminal Gang. And we would run around the streets and bust windows and spray paint on walls and fight and steal from liquor stores and do stupid kid stuff. But when I was 15, I had one of the most pivotal months of my entire life. You see, I got a call from one of my best friends, Scott. And he asked me, to, uh, to come out and drink. But something in me was a no. It was a no. What up, Pete, dog? What's up, Skizzle? What's the deal? Uh, chilling, man. We about to go out. You coming? Nah, man. I ain't coming this time. Ah, you gonna be a beep? Yeah, man. I'm gonna be a beep today. All right, dude. We'll get up. Click. Within an hour, every single person in that blue Astro van was shot. And my best friend Scott was shot in the head and died. I didn't understand why it was a no for me. I didn't get why I, I was saved. So within a couple months, my family and I, my dad in particular, decided that it would be a great idea if I went somewhere else. And I went to go live with his high school sweetheart, Shirley Russell, in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. And I got off the plane, and there was a sign with my name on it. And that was going to be my new caretaker, which turned out to be my new, another mother. Um, within a couple days, I was checked into North Allegheny High School, which at the time was one of the richest high schools in America. It was complete culture shock. I was like, there's BMWs and Mercedes everywhere, and, and the football turf field, and the, the state-of-the-art broadcast system. The whole thing just, like, I didn't get it. Um, and another thing happened, which was I was the single only black male in the entire school. And it was awesome. <laughs> It was, it was so awesome because I was like this cool alien that everybody wanted to hang out with and, and, and like invite to the parties. And it was amazing. I had this new start. But I noticed something there that changed my life forever. I noticed something there that is the reason why I'm standing on this stage. 
What I noticed there was that at my former high school, where the, where the school was a mess, where the carpet was dirty, where the teachers didn't care, I would curse, spit, uh, be the class clown. I would do all kinds of stuff. But at North Allegheny High, where you could eat off the ground, I wouldn't dare do those things. And my grades went up. Same kid, different environment. What I noticed there was that the kids at my other school were drinking, smoking, listening to Outkast and Tupac. The kids at North Allegheny High were drinking, smoking, listening to Outkast and Tupac. They were doing the same things, but getting different results based on the environment that was set up. So I would like us to take a look at that from the macro. What would your world look like if you loved louder? What would it look like if we set up a world that was, that was steeped in love, that you couldn't miss it, that, that the environment just had love all over it? This is the point where most people go, cool, sign me up, I'm in. How do you do it? And here's the point where I answer. There is no magic bullet. It is absolutely everything. It is the downtown project. It is epic. It is Summit Series. It is everybody and anybody who is doing anything to further humanity. But what I do know, what I do know is that these next three steps that I'm going to give you will take whatever you're up to, to the next level. And you will become the environment that fosters growth for kids like me. When you are liberated from your own fear, you automatically liberate others. So the first step to loving louder, to turning the volume up on our lives, is risk. Being willing to risk it all in order to gain it all. Nothing amazing has ever happened from the comfort zone because all the best fruit is out there on the skinny branches. You got to go out there to get it. So ask yourself, was Martin Luther King afraid? Yes. Was JFK afraid? Yes. Was, Martin, was Nelson Mandela afraid? Yes. But they did it anyway. That's the call for us, is to do it anyway. And as a, a great philosopher once stated, man cannot discover new oceans until he has the courage to lose sight of the shore. So that's where I'm calling us to. Which brings me to the next step, which is celebration. Everybody do like this. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, <laughs> you guys are like, ah. <laughs> So celebration. What you appreciate, appreciates. And what we focus on, expands. And what you celebrate in others gets repeated. So when I was a kid, I would get a C and my family would go bonkers. And a C may not seem like a big deal to most people, but that meant, despite my dyslexia, that I was operating like a normal child, right? I was normal. But the crazy part is I fell in love with, with, the, with the love so much that, that, that I wanted more. So when I graduated from LSU with my master's degree, with a 4.0 for all three years, and I blew a kiss out to my family. It wasn't just about the love. It was about them understanding a principle, which is when you celebrate something in other people, they want to do more of it. So if you own a business and your employees aren't doing what you think they should be doing, celebrate the stuff they are. If you have a wife or a husband or, or a boyfriend or a girlfriend, and in your opinion, they're not um, performing the way you would like them to, <laughs> celebrate the stuff they are doing right and they'll do more of it. At the end of the day, we all just want to be seen. We all just want to be seen and appreciated. Which brings me to the last step. And that is, and this is the most important step of all. Check, please. Being responsible for everything. Being responsible for everything that shows up in your life. To love louder, you have to, the, the true freedom lies from knowing that there is no them that everything that I'm experiencing, I caused and I allowed, not them. That's true freedom. So, <laughs> I love this line, because <laughs> it's about that, it really is. It's about, <laughs> like, it's mine, you know? So many of us, and I'm, I'm getting to the end here, so many of us have marched through life, leasing with an option to buy. 
but never truly being committed to being an owner, to owning it. So today, I challenge us all to be an owner. Mm -hmm. Mm-hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm. Yes. (laughs) I love it. Yeah. Uh, To dance in the wind, right? To, 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 to move with, with that thing, that, that, that magic thing that happens when you know that you're free. Now, in like this, so many people are going to go to bed tonight, assuming that they'll wake up the next day. But so many won't. So if you're a teacher, if you're a mother, if you're an executive, if you're a husband, if you're a wife, if you're an engineer, Whatever your job title is, your most important job is to love louder in all that you do and be. To fill your cup and give from the overflow. My name is Preston Smiles, and I live by the creed, love will find a way. Everything else will find an excuse. I dare you to love louder. Thank you. (laughs) 